How many of you have heard the term trail magic? That's when you're on a hike and maybe you run into someone you've never met before and you strike up a good conversation and before you know it you've got a lot in common and you've made a new friendship. That could be one form of trail magic. Or perhaps you're hiking a new trail and you come across a beautiful waterfall or some other scenery that you've never seen before. That could be a form of trail magic. Well, it feels like for me over the past couple of days I've run into a bit of digital magic. And what I mean by that is just a few days ago a distribution I've kind of long hoped for, which is K Revenge, was officially released, combining the OB Revenge distribution with the KDE desktop. So that has been awesome to set up and have running and so far I'm thrilled with it. And today we're going to take a look at a little bit more of what I'm going to call digital magic with a system that I'm going to say is a hybrid system through backslash Olaf. So let's jump over and take a look. So Linux fans, in a world where we have hundreds of Linux distros to choose from, it's sometimes difficult to find one that really stands out and is doing things different. I was first introduced to Backslash Linux uh, several months back through email by the developer Lucifer Conrad Reeves, and I was intrigued. I've done a couple of reviews of Backslash Linux, but this particular version, Backslash Olaf, I think is really doing things more different than the previous versions, and this is more of a hybrid experience than it is a full-on KDE experience. And so I'll point out some of those reasons why I say it's somewhat hybrid. Now, this is based off of Ubuntu, and there's a little bit of KDE Neon in there every now and then as you're setting things up. And so the, the base is going to be stable. In fact, let's jump over here and we'll take a look so that we see what we're dealing with. Uh, in the info center. So you're looking at the latest version of Plasma, uh, 5.9.5, as well as 5.7.1, yes, dot to point, point to dot, uh, in the QT version. Now there's a later version of QT, and then we're looking at, I believe this is more of a long-term support kernel here at 4.4.0, and this is 64-bit. So what we have going on here, and actually, let's look at the getting started. So you don't get a welcome screen, but what you do get is a nice PDF saying welcome. Thanks for trying it out. And it'll tell you about the setup process. As you're setting this up, uh, even though you, feel, you think you're giving it a user name and everything to set up, you actually log in for the first time under administrator with the password as root. You can then go in and set up your own account with your own password and everything for login and switch over to that particular user. All right, so this is where they go on to talk about the KDE Look Plasma look and feel is provided with a backslash shell. So this shell is not a desktop environment, but a shell script running on the K desktop environment. So you'll see that in play here with like, for example, this universal menu. And I want to talk about that because I'm starting to really come around to this. Instead of pinning icons here, uh, what you're going to have from app to app, not with every application, but from app to app, you're going to have this universal menu that allows you to go in and change settings, um, you know, change your view, add bookmarks, so on and so forth. And it's growing on me. I think if you're a Mac user, you're used to having that universal menu here. I've got a very nicely integrated dock here and this is actually the latte dock that's in place with the El Capitan or El Capitan um, icon theme here and this may have been tweaked some by uh, backslash to give it a slightly different look now there's another area here where I get the feel that this is a hybrid desktop experience and that's with these two apps here you've got calendar now this isn't the calendar that's a part of KDE. In fact, if we go here and go to about, we'll see that this is calendar 3.20.4 and this came from GNOME, but it really works here. It looks clean. Um, you know, it's got the same controls that you're used to seeing within QT or the KDE desktop and it just works well here. Plus it's a nice clean calendar. Same with maps. This is maps from GNOME. And if we take a look over here, we'll see 
uh, a map application for GNOME 3.18.4 and brilliant again nice clean interface but it doesn't look out of place so you start to see and get the feel as you're using this that there's a little bit of hybrid going on with GNOME as well as KDE now let's take a look at the dock okay so if I were running GNOME and I had dash to dock set up I could set my dock where I typically would which is here at the bottom it just feels natural there and so this also lends to the feel that you're working with maybe GNOME here um, because typically until latte dock came along and now there's some plasma applets and things that uh, are plasmoids that are in place that allow you to set up a dock quite easily but before that really with the KDE desktop what you would do is as opposed to using a dock is you would pin your application shortcuts here on the panel now let's see what happens if we right click and we unlock widgets and this is the first time I'm going through this so panel options panel settings so now yes we do we will have options to change out the height and everything just like you typically do within KDE you could also change that screen edge but in this case since we have a dock at the bottom I'm gonna leave that there at the top so I just wanted to kinda of discover and make sure that you were able to do that so we'll go back and lock the widgets now the launcher here is also going to be different than what you typically see as far as the icon itself if we right click now we've got edit applications application menu settings and unlock widgets again so if we unlock widgets let's go back and take a look again now we have the alternatives and that'll take you in to the application dashboard application launcher simple menu and then we have application menu so this is a launcher based on cascading pop-up menus and that looks to be the default so we're going to cancel out of that I'm going to lock the um, let's lock the widgets again because I want you to see what this is by default but it's fun to dig in a little deeper and see kind of what the developer was doing and how they've got things set up as well so you'll see here get again this is you know quick search clean interface much like the standard simple menu what I call the simple menu within KDE the hybrid feel is here because typically with GNOME you're going to have your panel up top and you're going to have a dock it's either going to be on the left or in the case of setting it up some of the extensions you could have your dock in place here at the bottom so just from the overall layout I think most of you would agree it even kind of looks somewhat hybrid um, you know with controls and the particular theming and everything that's going on so overall I really like this it's a nice experience and it's unique so if we go in and we take a look at the uh, file manager it's going to be Dolphin and actually that was one of the first things I jumped to I thought wow this has kind of got some hybrid apps here some GNOME apps could it be that this is going to be something other than Dolphin well thank goodness it is Dolphin because again you've heard me say this <laughs> over and over again in my videos uh, Dolphin's the best file manager available within Linux in my humble opinion so alright so the icon theme works well here but again it's kind of the same hue as you would see in say Arc if you were setting up Arc and it doesn't give you the feel right out of the box that you've just got plain Jane KDE going on so it all works well let's look at the pre-installed applications now I've installed a few things here just for recording purposes I think this is a good mix you've got K Majong here for under games that's the only game under graphics you have Gwen view oh let me say this by default instead of seeing the actual application name what you saw here was the general name so it could say it would say for example uh, photo viewer uh, you know or in case of uh, it would say here uh, internet browser so I changed that so that we could see the actual name of the application that's installed so we have Gwen view uh, we have color paint ocular and scan light K color chooser under internet you had chromium as the default K torrent and Thunderbird mail as opposed to K mail Let's see what this is I'm not familiar with this remote desktop client 
All right, let's go back. We'll go to multimedia. You've got cheese. I installed Caden Live, but Cody Media Center was set up for you. Also, Minitube, and I didn't have good results with that. Went in to do a search. And so I'll have to mess with this later. Maybe I'll put a link in and see how this Minitube player fares. Um, also, uh, music or music. Not familiar with this, so I may give this a whirl a little later. And then I installed OBS. There was a sound recorder by default. And then by default, VLC Media Player, which I happen to use as my default media player. So I was happy to see that there as well. And then I installed Voco Screen. Now under Office, you're not going to see LibreOffice. Instead, you'll find WPS Office, which is fine by me. I really enjoy using WPS Office. I'll go back and forth between Libre because I always want to stay on top of what LibreOffice is doing. And it's probably the most widely used Office suite within Linux. Uh, but I really like what's going on with WPS as far as layout and everything. All right, under Settings, you've got Additional Drivers. And here we'll see here Neon Software. So you see bits and pieces of Neon, although it states that it's based off of Ubuntu. Um, there's, there's a lot going on here in way of pulling from various, I think, various areas to kind of pull all of this together. But again, it works. Uh, other software updates, additional drivers. So I'm currently not using the micro firmware, firmware driver. Um, so I'll set that up later. All right, moving on, you've got disk. Software and updates, you're going to do that through Discover, which is a part of KDE. You also have Synaptic Package Manager. And then you've got your default system settings here. And you'll notice, too, that this particular icon set works really well within the KDE desktop throughout. All right, so under System, you've got Discover there, the Dolphin File Manager, Info Center, Console, Default, KSysGuard, K Wallet Manager, and then Synaptic again. Under Utilities, we've got the App Launcher, the full screen app launcher. And again, this looks more like what you would see within GNOME than what you would see in the KDE full screen launcher. So back to that hybrid fill again with quick search. So it's really a unique mix there, but it works. Uh, back under Utilities, we also have Clam. Antivirus, Kate, KCalc, there's Latte Doc, so you could launch in for settings there. Uh, no Maps, Spectacle, which is an excellent screen capture app, and then Vim, which I'm not familiar with. I've never used Vim, so it's another console tool there. And then next you have Power Session for lock, log out, suspend, so on and so forth, shut down. So that's kind of the rundown there. It's not bloated with a lot of pre-installed software. There's very few K apps in here, really. I mean, even excluding KML. And so I'm running two different distributions right now. One is Arch-based, which is K-Revenge, as well as backslash Olaf, both using the KDE desktop environment, but both with different bases. Uh, one has a newer kernel so on and so forth. So I'm going to kind of bounce back and forth between these two. And right now, K-Revenge feels faster and snappier. And that's one of the benefits of having par partitions set up in a way where you can, you know, close out one and, and jump back into the other. Uh, it's kind of fun that way. Um, or multiple, multiple systems, perhaps, where you'll go from one to the other. So definitely give this a look. If you're kind of bored with what you're using, Maybe you're looking for something that you know gives you this hybrid feel. I think this is going to be something to kind of keep your eye on. All right, that's it for now. I uh, hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching.